Hello, my name is Summer. I am painting a series of seven self-portraits embodying different feminine archetypes. It has been both a joyous and a treacherous exploration of my own psychology. The queen is the fifth in the series, and she is what I'll be working on in this video. While I dive into the inspiration behind this series, and how painting myself over and over again has impacted my overall well-being. I'd like to give a brief overview of how I got here, to the Queen, so let's start from the beginning. The series began as a way for me to explore my own identity and understand how I relate to the world around me. In an episode of Andy Pizza's Creative Pep Talk podcast, he introduces the idea of the identity parade and talks about how seeing every piece of art as a self-portrait unlocks hidden creative gold. It's a great episode and I'd highly recommend checking it out after you watch this video in full, of course. As someone who has always been interested in psychology, I took this idea of the identity parade and ran with it, researching, visioning, and creating pieces of art to represent the seven feminine archetypes. And I arranged these pieces in an order of completion that felt to me like a personal evolution. I started with a maiden, this very youthful, innocent, perhaps somewhat naive and eager to please version of myself. And while I absolutely love and adore this version of myself, I also recognized a need to let go of her a little bit and make room for some of these other aspects of my personality to shine through. With each piece that I've created, I've uncovered more and more hidden truths about myself. With the warrior, I reconnected with the driving force of my own anger and discovered how that fire can be channeled into positive change. With a lover, I rekindled a sense of belonging in my own body and felt into the deeply sacred nature of my own sexuality. Naturally, the mother came next, and I embraced my ability to nurture new life into being and touch the deep longing and grief that seeing myself as a mother brings up for me personally. And that brings me here to the queen. No other archetype so far has felt so absolutely necessary to integrate into my being. Life has been nothing short of challenging and there have been so, so many moments of wanting to lean into old patterns and ways of thinking and behaving. But with each painting in this series, I'm not merely putting an image onto a canvas, I'm also actively integrating the archetype into my life. Because I truly believe that doing so will bring me into more wholeness. So throughout the journey of planning, visioning, and painting the queen, I was also asking myself, what would the queen do? One of the biggest lessons I've learned through the painting of this series is that every moment is a choice. We always have a choice in how we respond, and this becomes really critical, particularly in conflict whether that be conflict with ourselves or with another. How we respond in tense situations plays a massive role in how our own psychology continues to develop. And because I started to take a pause and ask myself things like, what would the warrior do? Or what would the lover do? I realized that without that pause, we continue to let old subconscious patterns run our life. Not all of these are bad, but they're not always appropriate. And choosing a different response can drastically change the outcome of the conflict. And it can also help heal patterns that form through traumatic experiences. So to bring this into something a little more tangible, let's take a look at an example. 
Let's say, for instance, that typically when someone asks you for help, you oblige, even if you don't have the physical, mental, or emotional capacity. Because you have this underlying belief that people won't like you anymore if you say no. And this pattern is likely something that formed in early childhood from a parent, teacher, or friend that held a grudge against you or said something nasty to you when you told them no. Many years later, this pattern of people-pleasing continues. Unless you consciously interrupt the pattern. So you've been thinking a lot about the queen, and so the next time somebody asks you for help, you think, well, how would the queen respond? The queen knows she must protect her own energy because she has an entire village to look after. When the queen needs rest, she does not let anyone take that from her. At least, that's how my version of the queen would respond, but yours may be different. As I mentioned earlier, life has been nothing short of challenging, but the queen has been helping me navigate those challenges with grace, courage, and confidence. This piece of art has so much symbolism embedded within it, so let's take a look at that for a moment. My queen is a queen of nature, seated upon a tree-inspired throne. Clematis flowers bloom along the edge of the throne, symbolizing living an elevated lifestyle and reaching for your dreams, as the vines climb from the ground up, reaching for the sun. The gold dress and crown are of course inspired by royalty and bring confidence to the piece. The blue crystals on the necklace and crown draw upon the energy of the third eye and throat chakras. My queen sees intuitively and speaks clearly. The white cobra was seen as a protector of royalty in ancient Egypt and also lets others know that they probably shouldn't mess with me because I've befriended a very powerful and deadly snake. Her power ripples out of the sword below, and light shimmers from the heavens in the background. It's all very idealistic, as all of my archetype pieces have been. I've chosen to focus on the positive aspects of each archetype, but it's worth noting that they all have their shadows too. And just as I've learned that tapping into these archetypes can provide so much value, I've also learned that they all have their place. Meaning, sometimes the lover's energy might be more appropriate than the queen, or vice versa. The shadow side of the queen is that she can be a bit cold. Emotions may not make it to the surface as she puts on a brave, empowered face. Sometimes we need to feel our weakness, to be deeply humbled, and to break a little. The queen is the one who holds it all together, and honestly, I've needed that more than I've needed to feel my feelings. I've gone through periods in my life where I've allowed myself to feel it all, to just break and allow myself to be sad. But I learned that while it gets comfortable, I can't stay there forever. I can't wallow in my feelings, waiting for someone or something to save me. I have to be the one who says, enough is enough. Nobody is going to hand me the throne. I have to take it myself and know that I am worthy of the seat. Throughout the creation of this series, I have learned just how powerful of a human being I am. How I have the ability to choose who I get to be in any given moment, and the impact that that choice can have on the people around me. And it was honestly my shadows that got me to truly see my power for what it is. To have power is not inherently good or bad. It is what we choose to do with it that matters. And whether or not we choose to acknowledge our power does not determine whether or not we have power. We are always powerful. But if we do not acknowledge our power, it remains in the hands of our subconscious and in the hands of our subconscious, it may not truly serve us or the people in our lives. It took me seeing how powerful my sadness was to truly come into my power. I let life beat me down, 
I felt sorry for myself, and it showed. And when I realized how profound of an impact my own sadness or anger or general moodiness could have on my loved ones, I began to see truly the magnitude of my own power. And it made me want to change how I show up in the world. It made me want to take ownership of that power and use it to bring myself and others up instead of using it to beat myself and others down. To be powerful is both incredible and absolutely terrifying. So many of us would rather succumb to the belief that we are mere victims of circumstance than admit that we can change our own lives and the lives of others. That we are so powerful, in fact, that a mere thought is all it takes to begin to change our life, for better or for worse.